Do you want to play a class that has overpowered cards? Do you want to make insane comebacks from two health and cause your opponents to freak out? If the answer is yes, then you really want to play this aggro slash mid-range shaman deck. It's absolutely insane. They think they've got you beat, and then you play Bloodlust to keep that streak going on the ladder. Let's take a look at this deck, and let's see what makes it tick. Hello everyone, it's Dark Seeker here again, and this time we are looking at Loyan's, I hope I pronounced that correctly, Loyan's Agro Shaman deck. Now, this is a deck that Loyan has used on his stream. Um, he's used this deck to get into the legend ranks, and I thought, right, sure, this season, let's give this deck a whirl, let's see what it can do on the ladder. Now, in previous seasons, I've used Zulok and Secrets Paladin to great effect. Um, you know, going up to sort of rank 7, rank 6, rank 5, rank 4. Uh, I get bored with the ladder quite quickly, so I tend to rank up for a little bit, and then I just stop, and I focus on Arena, because Arena is, you know, what I love most about this game. So, if I am playing on the ladder, I do want to be using decks that I, that I see uh, as quite effective. And this is certainly a deck that's effective because the Old Gods expansion came out and with the introduction of Standard Mode, uh, of course certain cards from previous adventures or expansions are no longer valid. So with Standard Mode, um, Shaman really did benefit significantly from a, sit whole, a whole range of new cards that have really made the class more powerful and in my opinion made Shaman a much more viable class for the ladder. Um, prior to the Old Gods expansion, you'd have seen Agro Shaman played with the Tunnel Trog um, and lots and lots of burn spells. Okay, so like Lava Burst, Crackle, Lightning Bolts, and so on. And as interesting as that deck was, and as overpowered as it was, and still is, it's, it feels very fragile, and having played that on the ladder, um, my win rate wasn't always as good as it should have been, because I always felt that deck was fragile, and if your opponent got a board going, then um, you could essentially be out-aggroed by your opponent. So, um, the, the, the old aggro shaman deck that you saw prior to Old Gods, I, I would honestly say was a bit like a glass cannon. You know, it, it packs an incredible punch, but it can shatter very easily uh, if, if your opponent somehow builds up a board with taunts or, you know, other, other comeback or defensive techniques. It, it can't cope. Whereas this deck can cope, and whilst it's billed as an aggro shaman, I'd actually call it an aggro slash midrange shaman. Now you saw in that earlier clip uh, at the beginning of the video, you can be at two health, and you can still make an insane comeback uh, due to bloodlust. But this deck can also control the board. You have double hex, so if they do play big threats, you can take care of them. It has cult master for card draw, which is really, really important. So this deck really it's it's well fueled with card draw it has good early game it's got good mid game and um well there aren't any overly expensive late game minions in this deck so it sort of stops at mid range i guess um but you've got cards like defender of argus for for taunts if you need it um so yeah, a very flexible deck that um, can really take on aggressive classes as well as control classes. So let's take a look at this deck. Let's see what, how it works and what makes it tick. You've got your early game. So Argent Squire, really, really good card. Divine Shield, it's a 1-1. Now, I've had great success on more than one game with turn one, Argent Squire, coin, Argent Squire, and then turn two, Flame Tongue Totem in the middle, and suddenly I've got a three attack minion with Divine Shield. So each Squire is probably going to get a couple of really good trades before they die. Um, Tunnel Trog, really useful as a potential turn one play. 
particularly if you've got turn two totem golem, which obviously buffs your tunnel trog. But the totem golem has four health, which makes it really awkward and really difficult to remove. So such a good card. Flame juggler is decent. Battle cry, one damage to a random enemy. But what's important about this card? Well, it's got three health and it sort of replaces the knife juggler. Knife juggler uh, got nerfed and now only has two attack uh, and two health. So flame juggler is a bit more of a sturdy minion and sure you only get one juggle out of it but having that three health I think is really really important so that's your early game you want to um, mulligan aggressively for these cards to try and have them in your opening hand um, I mean you you I'm always tempted to throw away the flame tongue totem in the mulligan stage if I don't see cards that I that, that can benefit from it immediately so for example you know if if I don't have an argent squire or two in my hand I'd probably be tempted not to keep the flame tongue totem and instead to mulligan for the trog the flame juggler or the totem gold them. In other words, mulligan for minions that yet can play in the early game. Okay, Tunnel Trog. We've just talked about synergy with Totem Golem. Well, there's more synergy with this card. You have Feral Spirit. Now, if you play your Tunnel Trog and then your Feral Spirit, your Trog is protected by two Spirit Wolves, and they are and they've got two attack, three health, and they have taunt. Sure, there's an overload of two fine but if you ignore the overload for a second the value on feral spirit is insane right two minions uh for three total cost that's pretty good with those stats now if you manage your overload correctly overload isn't always that big of a deal but even if it is you've got to remember that both of the spirit wolves that you summon have taunt so they are protecting your tunnel trog hopefully for at least one turn maybe two turns so the overload there was worth it um lightning storm is a potential board clear uh, it's really good against aggressive decks uh, there's only one copy of lightning storm in this deck though and i found on the ladder that i don't always draw into it when i need it because there is only one copy but if you do have it in hand at the right time it can be a lifesaver because against aggressive decks it can potentially remove their whole board i'm not crazy about the whole two to three damage thing because you never know is it two damage is it three damage which is it you just don't know but it is a potential board clear and if you can combo this with the Azza Drake, which is in this deck giving you plus one spell damage or if you can combo it uh, with your spell damage totem well yeah lightning storm is decent okay but the card I really want to talk about here is the flame wreathed faceless this is a four cost seven seven with an overload of two again just forget about the overload for a second okay just look at the stats four cost seven seven that is absolutely insane and you know what I'm gonna say right now that is probably the best value minion in the shaman's entire arsenal dare i say the best value minion for any class specific card it's insane four cost seven seven just read that back to yourself play that back to yourself in your head for a second say it again to yourself four cost seven seven insane and it synergizes <clears throat> with the tunnel trog so flame wreath faceless on turn four is very difficult to deal with Think about a mage, right? If you play this on your turn four, and they go into their turn five, fireball costs four. Well, they can try and fireball it. Oh, it puts it down to one health, but unless they've got the coin, well, they can't ping it. It survives. It's a minion that is really hard to remove, and it's probably going to get two, maybe three trades on the board before it dies in the early to mid game because it's got seven health, which makes it so good. This card right here makes this deck so powerful okay it's powerful in the early game it's powerful in the mid game and in the late game well seven attack seven health trades into most things quite happily and kills them so yeah it's really really good 
Okay, let's look at a few other cards in this deck. Bloodlust. Now, well, gosh, that, that card is ridiculous, right? I've, I've really come to appreciate this, this spell. It's a spell. I've really come to appreciate it. You saw in the, the early beginning clip, you know, Bloodlust can just give you a surprise lethal out of nowhere. And because uh, being a shaman, <clears throat> your hero power is summon a totem, and you will summon lots of totems, hopefully throughout the game. And if some of them stick, well, Bloodlust, as I say, forget just forget having minions on board. Just having totems on board can potentially give you lethal. Um, Doomhammer. Now, there's only one copy of this weapon in this deck um it's it's good for trading into enemy minions on the board controlling the board it's also good for going face it's a very flexible card and because this deck is an aggro slash mid-range deck doomhammer can fulfill an aggressive role or a more sort of mid-rangey controlling kind of role depending on what it is you're trying to do are you trying to clear the board or are you trying to kill them uh, rockbiter is also in this deck so you can combo rockbiter weapon with the doom hammer alternatively rockbiter uh, which which only costs one can be used to control the early board it's something that i didn't mention earlier but you can kill off enemy minions that get played on turn one or turn two and it's very effective but as i say comboing rock by to the doom hammer that gives doom hammer five attack uh, per swing so that's 10 attack in total on a particular turn that can be enough to kill your opponent hex hex is just ridiculously amazing um this is what separates this version of shaman uh from the previous aggro shamans before that, that were run before the El gods expansion those decks were as i say usually incredibly aggressive and didn't usually run cards like hex this deck runs hex why well it lets you neutralize a big fat enemy minions so they can't kill you and that's where aggro shaman previously sort of lost out it was so aggressive so so aggressive that if they built up a board of big things well it couldn't quite deal with them whereas here we have hex we can deal with big things uh, if they get played and there are two copies of hex right the next card that i'd want to talk about and i put this um sort of on par with the flame wreath faceless that we talked about on um we, that we just talked about previously uh, this card is just as good the thing from below it's a taunt a five five and you look at the stats and you think oh, what five five for six cost that's not very good well actually it's amazing because this card will cost one less for each totem you've summoned in the game we're going to talk about this separately because it's such an amazing card and what what makes it so good is that it has taunt um it becomes really difficult to get through and if you just look at the fact that shaman its hero power is summon totems well you summon lots of totems this this thing from below whatever it is i'm looking at the artwork i'm not quite sure what it is but this thing from below it can become super cheap okay it can become super cheap you know and you've got cards that well summon totems tuscar totemic summons a random totem hey that makes the thing from below cheaper totem golem is a totem thing from below becomes cheaper flame tongue totem is a totem so you've got various ways of summoning totems um, and every time you do that the thing from below becomes cheap and before you know it hey the thing from below costs one and you've got two of them in your hand so you can play both of them for a, to a grand total of two cost hey two cost summoning or putting down two minions that are each five fives with taunt that's disgusting uh, and thoroughly amazing and you'll see in this video through in in the various clips that i show you that 
This card will win you games because when it's played early enough or in combination with other cards, your board just becomes absolutely impossible to beat. Okay, Cult Master, card draw, as a Drake, card draw. This deck has card draw in it. It can refuel as the game goes on, okay? And that's just really important just to keep the pressure going um, throughout. Right, my win rate with this deck, um, I'm at rank 12 at the moment with it, started out at rank 18, uh, battled up to rank 12 today, and um, well, there's there it is, it's an 80% win rate at the moment, uh, 4 losses uh, when I started playing this deck, just getting my head around it, and my opponents did get lucky, but as you can see, a significant win rate there. Um, I, on the 1st of May, undefeated with this deck on ranked play, uh, streaking into rank 12. So I'll carry on using this deck on the ladder, and uh, I'm sure that this deck is quite easily capable of taking you into legend. As I said before, numerous times now, I'm going to repeat it one more time, it's an incredibly flexible deck. Uh, it can be aggressive, it can be mid-range, whatever you want it to be. So let's have a look at a few clips and let's see how this deck functions on the ladder and the key things that you need to think about. Right, starting out against Druid here, um, we're at rank 16, and I'm pondering whether to keep the Flame Wreath Faceless or not. Um, obviously Totem Golem's pretty good, Tusk Totemic, pretty good. I'm actually going to keep the Faceless. Why? Because it's such a big swing card on turn 4. It can really push the game uh, into your, sort of, into your favour. I mean, maybe I should have mulliganed it away looking for a one-drop, you know, like the Tunnel Trog, for instance. Um, or even Argent Squire, but anyway, I opted to keep it, and the question here is what do we do? I'm actually going to coin out the Totem Golem. I'm not playing the Tunnel Trog here, why? Because it dies. Uh, the Druid will simply hero power, trade in the 1-1s, kill the Trog. I want to play the 3-4 because it doesn't die on board uh, or to the hero power. Of course, he had Wrath, so he had a way of clearing it, but that's fine. I'm now overloaded, uh, but we play the Squire. Notice that I'm valuing my Trog, okay? I haven't played it yet because um, I need something else that I can uh, play it with to get the... The, the attack buff. Okay, so I need another overload card that I can play it with. Raven Idol was slow. And he just here repairs and trades. That's fine. The board is reset now, and now I can just play Tuscar Totamic, potentially. Um, or I can play Trog Juggler, but no, this is fine. Alright, get the healing totem. Not what I was looking for. There are some really amazing totems you can get. You can get the Manatide totem, you can get uh, a totem golem. Uh, so yeah, that's not the one I was looking for, but alright, fair enough. It's turn four. I could just play it. I'm pondering whether to play the Trog, the Tunnel Trog, and the Flame Wreathed next turn, but no. It's fine on turn 4, right? So a bit of a controversial strategy in this game. I haven't had value from my Tunnel Trog, um, but I think I've had good reasons for making the plays that I did. So, yeah, that's fine. Nourish! Okay... I think that was a misplay on his part? Did he just... No? He didn't draw cards. Oh, he's ramped. Oh gosh, he... Okay, he... Ramped his mana up. Okay. That's interesting, I would have... Considered drawing cards there? Oh, anyway, whatever. Ah, that's what I was looking for. Totem Golem. So... Yep, Tuscar Totamic can give you good totems, including ones that can attack for three with four health. So, 
The druid ramping up to eight. Yeah, there was a reason for it. He he wanted to play Ancient of War, but look, there's Hex. Goodbye. <laughs> ah, he concedes. <laughs> so yeah, all of that ramp did not help him because we had the board. Heading into our next game here, and it's it's a shaman. Hmm. Oh, this is going to be interesting. And that's an interesting opening hand. We have Argent Squire, Tunnel Trog, and Totem Golem. Okay. Okay. No turn one play from the Shaman. So I'm going to put out a double Tunnel Trog. Double Trog. Pretty good, because look, turn to Totem Golem. Beckon of Evil, alright. Cthune, okay, so it's a Cthune Shaman, interesting. Well, we're not scared of Cthune. And notice what's happening in my hand. The thing from below, well... It's just got cheaper because I played a Totem Golem. This is going to be really strong in a couple of turns time. I'm going to be able to play both of those potentially on one turn. And that's just incredible. So Cthulhu is growing uh, and evolve. Okay, I'm not sure if that was much of an evolution there. Well, actually, I suppose it is. It's card draw and a 1-5 that's attack power gets buffed. But all right, not that great for him. So, Totem there, in order to um, cheapen our things from below in our hand, I'm pondering these trades now. What, what am I more scared of? I, I think I'm scared of him drawing cards, so let's do it like this. We kill the Acolyte, now we go face. So, how many cards can he, how many minions can he play on turn four to buff up his 1-5? That's the question. That 1-5, by the way, is such a good card in Zulok. It really is. Maybe not so good for Shaman. Wow, Gnomish Inventor card draw. Okay. Um, it's a bit slow because I can just kill it easily. Pondering the positioning here of Flame Tongue Totem. Where do I... Well, I... Hmm... I think I want it between the Totem Golem and the 1-1 one, one Totem. Or do I? Yes, I do. Yeah. Basically, we're using all of our other minions apart from uh, our Tunnel Trog for trades. So this, makes, this positioning makes sense. Positioning is one of those things that's really important in Shaman, and it's sometimes really hard to get it right. Um, a lot of thought's got to be placed into this because of cards like Flame Tongue Totem, which enable your other cards. So yeah, you've got to think about positioning. Which cards do you want to use for trading? Mana Tide Totem. Mm, he's drawing cards. All right, five mana to play with. I could play the thing from below, two of them. So two things from below. I could do that, but. Hmm. There are so many options here, you see. I, wonder. I mean, I could just Cult Master trade in the the Taunt. Um, or was that, is that a bad play? That probably is a bad play. Okay, so we, we're, we're cheapening the cost of the thing from below. We're, we're going to preserve our Taunt Totem in case he has something like a Doomhammer. And now we'll just play both of these. There you go. The things from below. Both are now taunts, and he yeah, and he concedes. Wow. <laughs> that board, so incredible and so difficult to deal with. Okay, this next game, we're going up against a mage. Now, the question, of course, is, is it Temper Mage? Is it Freeze Mage? What kind of a mage is it? 
my money is on Temper Mage, right? I've seen a lot of Temper Mages on the ladder and in casual games in the last couple of days. But look at the start. This is the dream. It does not get better than this in terms of a start. Even with Tunnel Trog synergy with Totem Golem, this is better because of the Divine Shield. Okay, he's pinging. So it's better because I could have played the Flame Tongue Totem in between both of those to get trades. But because the mage didn't play a minion, uh, I'm holding back on the Flame Tongue Totem because we're not trading with anything on the board. I don't want to reveal that I have it. Let him play a minion, then I'll put the Flame Tongue Totem down between the Argent Squires and get those insane trades. He's trying to control the board, which makes me think it's some form of freeze mage here, potentially. I mean, he's not played any minions, he's not played a mana worm into a frostbolt or arcane missiles, so, hmm. Anyway, in that case, we're not playing the Flame Tongue Totem. Tuscar Totemic gives us. Okay, a healing totem. Could have been better. All right, here come the spells. Arcane Blast. Goodbye. And a ping. All right. That's fine. That's absolutely fine. So, how do I want to do this? I could play the Flame Tongue Totem now. And then just play another Totem. I mean, I only want to play the Flame Tongue if I know it's going to get me value on this particular turn. And in this situation it is, because it's buffed up the Healing Totem, we get the trade, and now we just go face. Alright, it's down to 22. I'm at 30. Let's see how he deals with the Flame Tongue Totem, because he has to deal with it. Yeah, Frostbolt, sure. And a ping. Okay, once again, he's controlling... The, the pace of the game here in, in many ways um, however the thing from below has just come into my hand and it's a two cost 5-5 five five. so now I'd say the initiative goes back to me depending on whether I want to play it or not and I'm not I'm going to play the Azadrake uh, to draw a card I want to bring out a fireball here okay and that's not a fireball Right, so I thought if he had a fireball, he'd use it on the Azadrake, Drake, then the thing from below is safe. Uh, no, he plays the Emperor to get a discount, and that discount is really, 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 really scary. So, okay, sure, let's tank it. Doomhammer, Rockbiter combo, and we still do 5 to his face. We put him down to 13. Um, I have 4 attack from Doomhammer next turn, plus 4 from the Azadrake. Drake, that's 8 attack. Oh, he's nearly dead. And, um, well, I've got a handful of really good cards. Apart from the Lightning Storm. There's a Fireball. Okay. That's what I was looking for, because now we can play the thing from below. But let's Feral Spirit first. Let's just get Presence on the board. Um, do I want to commit... No, I... Do I want to commit the thing from below? No, I don't. Um, I'm conscious of AoE. I'm conscious of board clears. Uh, I'd like to see what he's got. Um, I'd like to see if he's got a flame strike here. So we're not going to play the thing. We, so we didn't commit the thing from below just yet. Um, if he does AoE the board, next turn we can play the thing from below and the mana to draw to draw at least one card. Wow. Wow. The Kabbalist Tome, he's just drawn a whole load of spells, and in any other situation, that would be scary. I mean, look, he just drew two Arcane Blasts. That's disgusting. Anyway, in any other situation, that would be scary, but um, in this situation, he's nearly dead, so I'm not too scared. Um, Doomhammer represents a lot of damage across two turns. Um... The question is, 
Uh, am I, sk I can't kill him this turn, right? I've only got seven. I can't kill him. Am I scared of his board? That's what I need to ask myself. Taunt Totem makes me feel better. Lightning Storm comes down. We are going face with the 3-4. The question is, do I want to hit his face twice with the weapon? Or do I want to clear the 3-1? What am I scared of? He's heading into turn 9. I'm actually scared of um, Flame Strike, Ping on the 5-5. Five five, and then him freezing my face forever with that Water Elemental. So I'd rather kill it now, get it out the way, just in case there is a Flame Strike. Uh, a flame strike ping. Um, Antonidas! Wow! Frost Nova! Okay, so Antonidas has just drawn him a fireball. I'm a little bit scared now because I can't move. My face is frozen. My board is frozen. Wow. Uh, are we in trouble here? Defender of Argus doesn't do anything. Um. We're playing the Mana Tide, I think, to draw cards, or to draw a card at least. Or are we? We have five minions on board, and as a Shaman you have to be very conscious of how many cards you've got on your board at a particular point in time. I, I think Defender of Argus here is good. The reason is, I just want to create some taunts. I I'm just playing it ultra safe, okay, ultra safe. And there's a Hex, right, so we can Hex the Archmage if we need to, so good old Tony there, Antonidas, uh, he's not going to survive for very long because we have Hex, but what can the Mage actually do? He's drawing here, he's looking for a solution, but that's it, it's over, there's nothing he can do. I have a 5-5 five, five on board, a 3-4, a 1-3, and a 1-3, and a 2-3. I don't think he can come back from this. He needed major AoE to clear any minions on my board that could attack and freeze my face. And sadly, the Archmage Antonidas, as good as he is, is not going to help the mage. And I commend the mage for trying there. I mean, he's, he's, he's done everything he can. But this deck, this Shaman deck, is insane. And there we go. And a win streak continues. Wow. Okay, looking at another game here, and this will probably be our final game, we are looking at uh, a rogue. Now, hmm, keeping the rock biter, dumping the flame tongue, because I've got nothing useful to combo that flame tongue totem with. If I'd had Argent Squire, maybe I would have kept it. This hand isn't very good, by the way. This is a terrible hand. Uh, I've got nothing to do here. Absolutely nothing to do. All I can do is use rock biter to clear a minion that he plays, and he's playing it slow, right? So weapon up, dagger up, great. I'm actually grateful that he did that, because I've still got nothing to play. Mm. Uh, this is not good. Lots of really good cards in my hand, but I can't do anything with them. Where's my totem golem? Uh, Tempo SI7 agent. Interesting. I think we just rock biter it down. And this is an interesting play. I'm gonna I've coined out the mana tide. I think it's gonna die. I think it's it's gonna die, but I value the card draw here. Um because I had nothing else I could have done on that turn. I had three mana and that was all I could do, so okay. I think playing the mana tide and drawing a card was better than just summoning a totem. Um I think it was better. Because I have card advantage in hand over him. Let's see what we get. Okay, that's fine. I could have played the thing from below. Okay, it was it cost four. But I actually value having more things on board at this stage. Having three things on board that can combo with Flame Tongue Totem next turn. Well, there goes my Tuscar. So now I only have two things on board. Oh right, only I'm going to have one thing left on board. Okay, he's trading. That's fine. 
So should I have played the thing from below? I don't know. Um, I don't know. So what do we do now then? Let's not dwell on past turns. What do you do here now? So here I can play the Flame Wreath Faceless, but we're floating a mana. Hmm. I can just totem like so. No, yeah. we're still floating a mana. But it doesn't matter. You've got a 5-5 five, five taunt on board. That's insane. And two totems on board. Which is really important because of bloodlust. Hero powering as often as you can here, within reason, I think is really important. Just so you've got enough on board to be able to kill him with bloodlust. Tomb Pillager is pretty good. 5-4 stats. It's pretty insane. But that's it. Hmm. Well, I can kill it. And I can draw cards. Sure. It's really good. So we draw... Ooh! Another thing from below. Should I screw up my positioning there? Should I put the Cult Master on the far right and then trade the totems in? Eh, whatever. Ooh! Auctioneer! Oh dear. Conceal? Okay. He, he's gonna go on a drawing card binge here. Oh, he saved the coin. Oh no, that was from the Pillager. Great. Here we go. Backstab. Draw more cards. Yeah, whatever. <sighs> Tell me when it's over. Alright. Let's have a look. What have we got here? The thing from below costs one. Hmm. Flame Wreath Faceless costs four. We have Defender of Argus. We can't kill the Auctioneer. So I think we play the Flame Wreath here. Or do we? Hmm. It's fine. It's a 7-7. Seven, seven. Uh, and I think we just play the Totem Golem. Um, or no, we play... We play... Um, we can play... We can actually play the Trog with a Totem Golem. Yeah, I screwed that up. I misplayed terribly there. Can you spot what I did wrong? I should have played the Trog first and then the Flame Wreath Faceless because of the Overload. Wow, I screwed up. Ah, uh, that could actually be a monumental error that will cost me, I don't know, because, but, but this board is so substantial, it's so big, how is he going to deal with it? I mean, rogues don't run Blade Flurry anymore, right? So how is he going to deal with it? Who? Oh, I think we've just crushed and, yeah, reconnecting. All right, this is a problem. We've just reconnected. I come back into this game, and there's a there's a Van Cleef on the board with a ridiculous amount of attack. But it doesn't matter. We have bloodlust, and we win the game. So there we go, ladies and gentlemen. Bloodlust, absolutely insane. Okay. It can look like it's over, the rogue can be drawing spells out of everywhere, but Bloodlust wins you the game. And there we go.